In train, you'll immediately see activity in the MVC meters. At rest, you should see no more than a bar or two of red if your goal is set in the right place. Note that if you have just connected your unit within the last 15 seconds or so, it is possible that you will see what appears as a maxed out meter reading at 5,000 microvolts. This is a brief calibration period for the device and will settle out within a few seconds. We've entered train in single channel mode to start. I'll take you through a single channel time automated session, then go back to settings to switch to dual channel and show you what that display looks like. When first entering train, take a moment to check if the goal is in the right place by having the patient perform a rep or two of their exercise. They should be able to maintain their contraction at or near the green success zone at the start of their session. You can adjust the goal on this screen again by sliding the goal navigator button or typing to fine tune as you did in settings. We recommend making goal adjustments before hitting play to start your recording if you intend to perform a time automated session, but you can also pause to make adjustments to the goal mid-session. Depending on the length of your session, you will likely see fatigue setting in for your patient, but keeping the goal consistent with the initial maximum contraction level helps to identify fatigue and track progress. Once your goal is in the right spot, you have two options. Option one is to use train in the freeform mode to get real-time feedback without timing cues. This option does not record activity for later viewing in track, but can be very useful for introducing patients to the system or for viewing activity during more functional or dynamic movement training. Option two is to begin your time automated session by hitting play to begin cues and recording. As previously mentioned, single channel mode is great for isolating a muscle during early rehab. It can reacquaint a patient with waking up their muscle voluntarily, as well as provide encouragement when isometrics feel like they might not be doing much. When your session is complete, you will be asked whether you'd like to save your session data. Tap yes to save your session data to track. We'll take a look at that output in the next video, but for now we've got some more to explore and train. Let's go to settings and switch on our audio, keeping all other settings the same. Remember, audio cues only apply to time settings and channel one output. Audio still works in dual channel mode, but will not be responsive to channel two output. We'll re-enter train and begin a brief time automated session to demonstrate the audio feature. See here that we have paused mid-session. This is where you could adjust goal if need be and restart on the relax portion of the current rep. If we decide we want to leave the time automated session prior to completion, we will not be given the option to save partial session data, so keep that in mind when thinking about your total time settings. Now let's turn on dual channel and check out that display. Now you'll see activity in both MVC meters as you settle into train in dual channel mode. As minor levels of fatigue set in, you may see some low level activation bars even at rest. This is normal for muscles that have been working. When adjusting goals here, they will move together or independently depending on whether goal match is on or off in settings. As in single channel mode, both goals can be adjusted via the slider or typing and you can make adjustments before or during a timed session. You can also use dual channel mode without time automation to monitor co-contractor or bilateral activity during functional or dynamic movement training. 
In this demonstration, we'll do the first rep with simultaneous bilateral activation. This type of dual channel monitoring would help to identify activation balance and symmetry issues during exercises where the work should be shared equally between the two channels. You may notice that activation levels are slightly lower in this rep, since we are not utilizing the resistance bar in the same manner as when activating an individual arm. In the second rep, we'll activate channel 1 while keeping channel 2 fairly quiet. This is the type of feedback you'd be looking for if you were trying to encourage activation on the channel 1 target muscle while encouraging inhibition on the channel 2 muscle where there may be compensation. In this scenario in the clinic, the channel 2 electrodes would be set up on the compensating muscle as opposed to bilaterally as we have them set up here for demonstration. In the third rep, you'll see activation on channel 2 while channel 1 rests. This is an example of an alternating activation scenario, where you would target muscles on both channels and switch activation back and forth on each rep. As you can see, it's all a matter of how you utilize the cues in train to indicate the desired outcome on each rep. When every rep is more powerful and more accurate, the neuromuscular pathway re-educates efficiently and patients regain control faster. Tap yes to save your dual channel output and follow me over to the track module.